Hi, thank you very much for joining us for this uh, webinar. And this is a follow-up to the discussion we had last week, where we focus on the impact of COVID to the economy and how Stan Big Bank has responded, particularly to their customers. These are the multinationals and other corporate businesses. But the level of interest has been very significant, particularly by the enterprises, these entrepreneurs. These are the small and medium enterprises who are asking to get more detail about what is in it for them. As a follow-up to that, I have got two heads of departments who are focused on these entrepreneurs to answer some specific questions. And I have the pleasure to introduce Eunice, who is the head of Enterprise Banking. Eunice, my pleasure to welcome you to the show. Thank you very much, Ramba. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And of course, Lillian, who is the head of Trade, Finance and Personal and Business Banking. Nice to have you on the show as well. Thank you very much, Wamba. Good. So we shall have more to discuss. And they got a lot to share with us. Uh, thank you so much for your high level of participation. And I'm sure you'll continue to engage with us even after this particular show. For now, we take a little break. Fantastic, fantastic. Now, let's look at the period before COVID. The bank has been engaging SMEs. We shall find out more about, because you've got a new name for them as goes your title. But you've been engaging with them. What is the value of SMEs to the economy and to the bank? Okay, thank you for that, um, Chiwamba. And um, for us, I think I'll begin first by explaining why we moved away from the term SME and uh, moved to enterprise. Why? So, you know, it all begins with an idea. So an entrepreneur wakes up one day and they have an idea to start a business. And they have an idea to start a business, um, whether micro, small, or medium. For us, we care about that, and that business matters to us. And because we, we embrace the entrepreneur and we embrace the entrepreneurial spirit that's behind these businesses, that's what uh, made us change the name from SME banking to enterprise banking. For us, an enterprise, we have customers right now in Kalingalinga, traders. We have traders in, uh, in, in Matero. We have uh, customers who are running barber shops in Mutendere, in Woodlands. We have customers running car washes in Long Acres. We have tailors in Woodlands. The, all those are, are entrepreneurs for us, and that is enterprise banking. So what value do they have to the economy and to the bank? Because one would not have thought that Stanbeek would have time for them. Yes. So a key, a key pillar in, in sustaining our economy and a key contributor to the economy, both informal and, uh, and formal sector, our enterprises have been the growth engine of the economy. They are the nuts and bolts um, of the economy. They contribute significantly to employing the, a, a huge uh, labor force in our country, and they contribute to putting ta uh, food on the, on the tables uh, in, in Zambia. That is significant. And for us as Stanbic Bank, for years we have been providing support and lending support and partnering with our, our SMEs to ensure that they grow um, the economy and we grow the country together. So Lillian, would you proudly say that you have sufficient experience handling, managing entrepreneurs, SMEs? Thanks, Joamba. Mm -hmm. And right on point, um, as Stanbic, I mean, we, we, we pride ourselves in the sense that we get very closer to the customer to understand their needs. When an enterprise comes to me, they, they are very simple in what they're looking for. They are looking for simple, simple solutions. They're looking for basic solutions. They are looking for efficiency. When they walk in and they ask me, Lydian, I've got an order. I don't have cash to buy the goods. They'll come to me and say, Lillian, I have expenses that I need to do. I need to pay my workers at the site or else chaos will start. Absolutely. At that point, I'm looking at this guy and he says, I want to cash now. I want, to, I, want, I want cash now. 
because I need to pay my workers. So for me, the first thing that comes to my mind is to try and walk the journey with my customer. And the very first question that I'll ask them is to say, do you have any pending invoices that has not been paid? Mm. Because I appreciate and realize the challenges that the economy is facing. And 90% of the time, my customer will tell me, I'll only be paid after 90 days. Mm. In the meantime, I need In the help. meantime, I need, I need cash today. If I don't pay my workers, there'll be chaos at sight. I think it's such conversations that then gives me an opportunity and gives the rest of the team the opportunity to respond and to respond by basically asking the customer to bring the invoice. Yep. And against that, we give them cash. I'll, I'll, I'll come to that a little later when we come to the issue of COVID. Let me start again with Eunice here. Mm -hmm. Fantastic experience here. Now we are going through a COVID period. Mm -hmm. First of all, tell us from your own observation, interaction with the market, how has the entrepreneur, the SME entrepreneur, how have they fared during this period? Okay. Uh, firstly, I'll say, Chibamba, that um, really COVID has turned the world um, on its head. And the, the entrepreneur has not been spared. And I, I, I believe they've been hardest hit. Because they, they were, when COVID uh, broke out, they did not have the shock absorbers. They did not have the extra uh, capital on the side to mm. continue paying uh, uh, their rent when businesses started slowing down with the need to social distance. And that is the only way that we can prevent this um, uh, virus from spreading further. With the need to, show, to social distance, um, our customers experienced that their customers stopped going to, to buy their stock. Our customers had stocked up and were expecting this stock to be bought and customers were now staying at home. So businesses slowed down. With uh, the economy going into what we would call a, a partial lockdown, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you find our customers who are running restaurants and bars up to now are still not, yep. uh, not yep. uh, operating. Meanwhile, they have operating costs and they have fixed costs mm. that must be paid. How does our entrepreneur continue to pay rent? Like I said, they do not have the shock absorbers. Mm. And that's where we come in. Yeah. And that's where we come in to assist. We've also seen that our customers, with the, uh, with the restrictions in the flow of goods across the borders, our customers were affected. So stock which used to come in in seven days now takes 20 days, it now takes a month. Meanwhile, you have this order, as Lillian said, which needs to be supplied urgently. And that's where we come in. We find that this is the time when our customers cannot even get hold of some of their suppliers because they too have been impacted by COVID. And Lillian will speak to that later in terms of how we have come in as a bank mm -hmm. to link critical buyers and sellers, even in this time. And over Linking and them where? Where are these buyers? Where are these sellers? Uh, okay, you want to add yeah, there before sure. I, I'll come back. Yeah, sure. Uh -huh. yeah, yes, so, Lillian. So, so Chibamba, our, our customers, our entrepreneurs, uh, mostly they get goods from across the world. So when Eunice is talking about linking them, it's basically linking them to specific markets. And that market that we've linked our customers to is China market. You have we've, a bank there? We have the bank there, a presence there, and also we've used strategic mm. partnerships mm. to sort of create an agency arrangement for supplies, for sourcing and supplies of goods. So that strategic arrangement is working so well, especially during the COVID. I recall uh, in the month of April, a customer calling me very early in the morning. Mm. Lydian, I've got an order. I need to supply a, a huge corporate and we need masks like yesterday. Mm. So the first question was, do you have the source? I was like, you know what? I'm confused. Borders are locked. How do I get the source of the supplies? And immediately, I was like, that's not a big issue. What? We've got a presence in China. And we'll be happy to connect you 
to the suppliers. Fantastic. Our strategic partners in China, they've got a strong base and therefore they'll be able to do just what you're looking for. Hmm. Let me get back to units here. That under this change of COVID, mm -hmm. there have been some positives and negatives uh, within the entrepreneur field. Have you observed any of the positives there? Yes, I mean, the, so this is where we have now seen the, 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 the full entrepreneur spirit uh, 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 birthing. And what we have seen is that there are some entrepreneurs who have seen the silver lining in this cloud and have taken the opportunity to diversify their businesses. Mm. So there are entrepreneurs like uh, tailors who used to make uh, Chitenga outfits for myself and Lillian. And they know that now Eunice and Lillian are staying at home. They're not going for social events anymore. Let me start making masks. We've also seen entrepreneurs, if you just go along um, uh, Ali Kinkata Road, you With see Kalingalinga. Your, Kalingalinga. You see how many entrepreneurs are there selling buckets um, with the tap because now everyone knows that you must wash your hands. So we've also seen our traders moving from uh, stocking exotic uh, goods like perhaps perfumes and now moving to stocking soaps because that's what he's selling. So we have seen the birthing of, an in, of, of, of entrepreneur spirit. We've seen the agility and the resilience. And if you ask me, Chibamba, it's that agility and resilience that the economy is going to rely on from our, our enterprises because that is what will see us through. We are relying on them not to give up. And as a bank, we are there to support that agility. You, you are dealing with a, with a customer. This is entrepreneur who may not be as enlightened as a, a corporate. They may not understand or have books in, in place. How do you deal with this kind of client who doesn't have audit accounts and things like that as a bank? How have you maneuvered? You want to have a go first? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. So as a bank, uh, we've worked with these customers over the years. We understand them. We understand their challenges. We've understood what is critical in their business. And so we have come up with solutions that respond to their needs. And one of the concepts that are being used uh, is for example, letter of credit. Th these are concepts that are difficult for an ordinary person to understand. So how do you deal with issues like audit accounts, letters yeah. of credit? What do you do as a bank to help? So we, what we do is we keep it very simple. Mm -hmm. we, we do not use all the, that, that, that language, letters uh, of credit, <laughs> guarantees. Yep. Even if we know this is what the, we, the customer comes to us with a need. And we respond to that need. So we know the challenges that our entrepreneurs are facing. It's access to finance, access to affordable finance. We also know that our entrepreneurs do not have the audited financials. They cannot afford to pay some of these um, uh, accounting firms. They, don't, they cannot afford. So we understand that that's a challenge. So that's where we come in and we lead with an outside-in approach. So we know that the, we've engaged our, our entrepreneurs, we know the challenges they are facing, and we stand ready as stand big, as we have, even pre-COVID, mm. during COVID, yeah. to respond, bearing in mind that when the entrepreneur comes to us, as Lillian said, we know you do not have your audited financials, we will not ask you for those, because we know you do not have them, but we have a way to still work with you. But you take it, you are bearing a huge risk, because the reason you, you need um, statements uh, of accounts, audit accounts, is to m reduce risk on the part of the bank. How, how do you mitigate that? How do you manage that? So we, we mitigate that by being continuously engaged right. with our customers. Okay. And where you would see risk, we see potential, and we see potential for growth. And we see an opportunity to partner and grow with these entrepreneurs. Like I said, it starts with an idea. All the large corporates, the large firms, they started from somewhere. They started with an idea. They started with an enterprise. And we, as a bank, have been supporting that enterprise. Even during COVID, we are standing with the enterprise because we know this too shall pass. Yes. This too shall pass. And post-COVID, we will continue to stand with the enterprise businesses. Fantastic. Let me borrow from the word connecting. Did you say we engage with, with them? I'm sure the way you engage with entrepreneurs uh, is dif different from the way you engage with multinationals. These got the systems are sophisticated. Maybe I start with uh, Lillian. 
do you have a platform specific for SMEs? And I'm asking this because when I think about Stand Big, mm -hmm. the way you are branded is intimidating for me. Mm -hmm. how, do, how do you become less intimidating to an average entrepreneur out there? How do you engage with them? So firstly, we, like I said, we have, a, we have led from first understanding our customers following our engagement. Our customers have told us what their needs are and they've told us what their challenges are. Mm. So in engaging with our entrepreneurs, first we know our entrepreneurs, they value their time. Time for an entrepreneur is money. So we know that the, the, the entrepreneurs value speed. We have empowered our entrepreneurs to transact from the comfort of their premises, wherever they are. They can transact on our digital platforms safely. And if you go onto our digital platforms, these are simple platforms that our entrepreneurs can easily maneuver and use them. We've also opened up a channel that is specifically for our entrepreneurs. So an entrepreneur can pick up the phone wherever they are, call 8888, and they will speak to a dedicated business banker who attend to their needs end to end. That's how we are responding to our enterprise customers. Excellent. The issue, I still want to come to the issue you mentioned earlier, uh, Lillian, to do with trading. Most of the entrepreneurs are in trading. Am I right in Zambia? I don't know whether I'm right, but my, my perception that many of them are in trading. Mm -hmm. Many of them have gone through a lot of challenges today. Would like you to take us once slowly and just step by step. What do you do with both of those that have issues, they need liquidity, they need support? Just what do you do to manage them? Thank you, Chibamba. Uh, so our enterprise clients are very, very important to the growth of the economy. Yeah. And what we do as a bank in my unit from the trade financing perspective, we engage with them. An entrepreneur will call you. An entrepreneur will walk in and will walk in and ask. In fact, when they walk in, what they are looking for is just cash. What they are looking for is speed at which you give them that cash. So they want cash and it must be given out quickly, okay? Precisely. And, <laughs> and don't ask me, don't ask me for an arm and a leg and don't ask me to bring you security. Okay. okay. I probably yeah. do not okay. have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they are asking for simple, very, very easy and instant delivery mm. of what they're asking for, which is basically cash. That's what they're asking yeah. for. So when they come in, usually it will be like, Lillian, I need help. I need help because I need to purchase the orders that have been given. I need, I need, to, I need cash for the orders. And at that point, you see the stress that this customer is going through. Yeah. Especially now. Especially now, where the opportunities are very slim. Yeah. Everyone is running for that opportunity. Mm. And therefore, you see the need for the bank to respond. And in most cases, you find that sometimes it's not even like orders. Sometimes it will be just cash to pay the workers. Mm. Like workers. you mentioned about construction. Cons yeah. Workers yeah. on site. Yeah. Mm. And at that point, I think what is critical then is to sort of understand them. How do we align? Where do we come in? How do we support? So you, your, your job to ensure that there's continuity on their part of the business yes. while they are waiting to be paid perhaps by this mm. big, big uh, uh, Precisely. client. Precisely. Yeah? Precisely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Chibamba. When an entrepreneur walks in, they know what they are looking for. And they will easily tell you, I've got an order. I've got an order that I need to finance, that I need to pay for. I've got the invoice that I've, I've not been paid. I'm waiting for money. And at that point, I think you then start thinking, how best do I mm. support you? And it's very easy for us because we've got solutions that are very tailor-made. Specific for Specific the... Specific for the needs of our entrepreneurs. 
And that is based on the experience I've had. Precisely. Interactions, yes. engagements. The client who brings uh, an invoice will tell him, bring that invoice and we'll give you cash. It ends there. What? The client who says, look, I need, I need to, get, to get more stock. I need to get more orders. We'll simply say, can we have the order? Mm. And the moment he brings the order, we authenticate it, we finance. Fantastic. The client who comes and says, hey, I need to import from China. We've got all the capabilities. We've got the expertise. Mm. We connect them to the Chinese market. And it's not only for the importers, by the way, mm -hmm. the exporters as well. In what way? In what way we've got strategic partners that we work with. Exporters, do they, what, what do they go through? I mean, they're exporting. What do they need the bank for? Well, so usually you find that the exporters have got goods. For example, a trader, a commodity trader, will probably want to export uh, maize, right? And they need us to connect them to the, to the buyers outside. That's basically what it is. And we'll connect them. Let's come, thank you, uh, just to come back borrowing from your experiences, dealing with these uh, entrepreneurs who are facing difficulties, coming down to COVID now, mm -hmm. some of them are fa maybe failing to pay back. Uh, everybody's going through this liquidity. Mm -hmm. You are helping them, mm -hmm. but they may find the challenges maybe servicing. How are you handling that? Mm -hmm. So if I can just take mm -hmm. you back first, um, Chibamba, and yeah. just uh, also uh, leading on from what Lillian has just explained. Yeah. One of the key challenges um, has been in, during the COVID time is that our entrepreneurs have experienced delayed payments because COVID has had an impact even on large corporates. So large corporates as well have, have been failing to, where they used to pay in 30 days, they're now paying 60 days. And the people they're paying are entrepreneurs. Mm. And that's when they come and have the discussions with, that, Lillian. Uh, with, with Lillian yep. and with my team as mm -hmm. well in terms of how do you unlock, how do you help me as I wait for 60 days um, mm. to be paid? So that has been key for us in terms of having solutions. And we had these solutions even before, even COVID. before COVID. So when COVID came in, we, were, mm. we, we, we stood ready to yeah. already respond. Yeah. yeah, just to add on to what uh, Eunice has said. So that delayed payment is, is really a ripple effect of what is going on even in the downstream mm. uh, space. During the COVID uh, period, our customers... Almost 95%, 95% of our customers have experienced delayed in logistical services. Wow. Because the borders are closed. Because the suppliers out there, they've closed their production. So if there is no delivery, you definitely expect the payment to delay. Because payment will take effect only when our entrepreneur has delivered on the order. Yeah. Yeah. So that is sort of affecting the way our entrepreneurs are doing business. What? Okay. Um, I'll come back again to the question. Yes. Um, on those who are not servicing their loans during this mm -hmm. time, those that are going through, how, how are you helping them okay. as a bank? So as a bank, we have responded to our, our entrepreneurs during these difficult times. And we know that uh, business is slowing down we know that they're not experiencing the same kind of turnover as mm. they used to. And we know that um, repayments will come under pressure as well mm. because they have pressure to pay salaries, they have pressure to pay rent. So what we're doing is we're alleviating the stress on them paying their, their, their servicing their debts with us. And we have given um, COVID assistance. Mm. COVID assistance has come in different forms. So we've given COVID assistance in the form of uh, a payment holiday. Mm -hmm. Or on interest or a payment holiday on uh, principal or indeed a payment holiday on both the interest portion and the principal for a period of time in agreement yeah. um, with uh, with our our entrepreneurs but what has been key has been um, engagement and constant engagement with an entrepreneur so constantly speaking to them and them speaking to us so we do urge our entrepreneurs not to sit and feel that the burden is theirs alone we are, we stand ready to carry the burden with you during this COVID time and to see that post-COVID, we still have our enterprise businesses still thriving. 
The other thing that we have done, like I said, is that uh, even in these COVID times, we have seen the true spirit of an entrepreneur come out. So we have seen entrepreneurs who have seen opportunities. We have seen entrepreneurs who still require working capital support to, to drive these new ideas that they have, they have uh, picked up out of COVID. Is it an idea to supply more masks? Is it an idea to, 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 to supply more hand sanitizer? And we have been there to provide um, uh, working capital support to these entrepreneurs, obviously uh, falling in line with our, our credit criteria. But as I said earlier, we do stand ready, as we have been uh, in the past, we do stand ready to help our entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Did you want yeah. to add something? Yeah, yeah sure. Mm -hmm. uh, and indeed, during this time, I think we stand ready as, as a stand big mm -hmm to finance them through our trade solutions. And you've seen that most of those entrepreneurs that are very quick to spot opportunities, they've come through at a time when they don't even have anything at all. And we've been there to support their orders, especially for medical related orders. And we've also seen that because of production lines going down in most, um, in most, in most manufacturing companies, we've been able to connect our customers to the Chinese market. As we are aware, China is just a market that is immense and able to sort of absorb shocks from the production or from the supply perspective. And we've connected them through the, our store solution. Our solution is basically meant to connect the importers to the China market. And it rides on our capabilities as well as on our strategic partnership. What does it do to an entrepreneur? It sort of relieves them from the anxiety around where to find the orders as the opportunities are emerging. Yes. So we connect them to the suppliers in China. We also guarantee them the quality of the goods that they are getting. Not only do we guarantee the goods, we also assure them to facilitate for transportation logistics. Mm. And in addition, because we know they don't have cash, we basically finance them with short-term loans. Obviously, like she said, mm. it follows the normal credit process. Listen to both of you ladies, Lillian and Eunice. I have a feeling that Stanbic is more than just providing finance. It's like you're playing an advisory role. Am I correct in that area? To the SMEs? It's like you're also advising them how to survive during this particular diff difficult time, how to manage their businesses. Do I, am I getting you right there? Or, uh, in fact, some of them don't have audited accounts. It's like you also guide them how to begin to improve their businesses. Is that, is that the right picture? Through, through our, our, our continuous engagement uh, with our, our entrepreneurs, we have kept the conversation going. And it is through that conversation that we, we draw insights from our entrepreneurs and also impart what we can to our entrepreneurs to help them grow. But we've also learned significantly from our, our entrepreneurs during this time. Yes. And we continue to, to just be in awe of their, their resilience mm -hmm. and their agility. And we, we continue to just, um, yeah, I think I'll so, but, and because yeah, sure. mm -hmm. And because we've got a, a dedicated trade finance team, we're able to engage and sort of uh, align to their need and see what else can we do with you? Because the more we engage, the more then we understand that actually the solutions is right in front of us. Yeah, because the belief is that when you deal with uh, a, a big corporate like Stanbic and you're an SME, you don't just leverage the, the finance they give you, you also tap into their resource base, their knowledge, their expertise, and they up your game as an SME. I'm, I'm sure this is what happened to most of them, that their, their businesses are no longer the same because they're engaging with you, right? But as we conclude, I just want to hear from you, uh, what is your overall perspective about your role, in your role, uh, to supporting entrepreneurs in, in this country, especially those who are your clients. How would you want to conclude your discussion? You want to start, uh, Lillian? Well, I think for me, the fact that as a bank who've worked with these customers for a long time, we've caught 
a market advantage in terms of the knowledge base, that competitive advantage of being in the market for over 50 years. We've worked with these customers. We understand their challenges. We understand their pain points. And because we continuously engage, we are well positioned mm. to respond to their needs. Mm. Speak to us, to our customers, our entrepreneurs, those of you with pending invoices, those of you that are looking for cash tomorrow, please engage us, speak to us, and we'll be able to unlock that cash. Those that are not with the bank, there are those that are listening to you and watching you right now. They have no account, they are not your client right now. How do they listen to you now? What do you say to them? Well, they're welcome. We are, they're welcome. We are ready to open the doors and they are welcome to become part of the bigger family, the Standard Bank group of families. Fantastic. What do you want to say as well? Well, just to, to build up on what Lillian has said, yeah. um, we value our entrepreneurs and, and, and we respect the hustle and the grind that goes into firstly having the, the, the bravery to start a business and then seeing it through. We value that and we respect it. And we respect your business, whether micro, small, medium, we respect your business. And we know that your number one need is to grow. And we want to grow with you. We know times are tough right now. We were with you before COVID, during COVID we're with you. Post COVID we will still be with you because the economy is counting on you. The country is counting on our entrepreneurs. And we want to partner with our entrepreneurs. So, tulipamo, tulipamos. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Having had a discussion with my two beautiful ladies here, um, that's Lillian, the head trade uh, finance, personal and business banking. And of course, Eunice, who is the head enterprise banking. It's been an insightful, very exciting discussion, and I'm sure that most of the people who have listened to you today will want to have a discussion with you tomorrow. I'm sure that the way you came out on, the, on this webinar is the way you come out when they come to your offices. Am I right? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so yeah. much. So from us, this has been an exciting moment. Um, Stan Big Bank, during the period of COVID-19, how the bank has been facilitating, supporting their clients, and of course, the economy of Zambia. From me, Chibamba Kanyama, thank you so much for joining us. Please keep the lines open and engage with the bank as soon as you have the opportunity. Thank Tomorrow you. Tomorrow, it's gonna be a better day.